get full of wife and husband. Got bills up a debt, negative abundance. But let's say one day we get a promotion, come and increase pay. But now he's not home, he's away. Working nice late when his kids want to play. Either way, there'll always be pain. There can't be flowers without rain. When the showers come yes. again, increase the power of your flame. All right. Welcome back to The Ranch Friends. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. I wanted to show you this adorable gift that one of our church members made for me. It was so sweet. I just absolutely love this precious woman of God. Um, she saw this fabric and she said she just couldn't resist. She had to make me an apron, so... <laughs> I absolutely love this apron. It actually makes me want to cook, which isn't my favorite thing to do. If any of you are wondering what is going on with my hair, I've been letting everybody know. This is what happens when you eat the blue eggs. Look at this sweet mug my sister got me for Christmas. I've been meditating on this this morning and I've been wondering, does this count, Lord? Me and Jesus have a lot of dishes to do today. It's the day after Christmas, and I have a few things I've gotten behind on. I have mounds of laundry, mounds of dishes, but hey, no problem. What are you doing in here, girls? We're playing with our new toys. Look, I need, can I go? Home? <laughs> <laughs> You having a dance party with your yeah. girls? And she and she's uh Holland. Oh. Holland. And I'm the DJ. We're pretending it's a boy there to be Toby Mac. Nice to meet you, Holland. Well, Rex can be Toby Mac. Yeah. Good job, Rex. <laughs> Rex, are you going to rap? Rex, are you going to rap? Are you going to rap? Uh oh. No, but he's going to destroy everything. You need to give him some peanut butter. He'll look like he's rapping. We're supposed to be doing school today, but we decided. It's just much more fun to play with our toys. As you can see, we didn't get too far on this outdoor pig run because the ground is just frozen solid and getting all of the tea posts that we need in there isn't going to isn't going to happen. So we're going to have to wait till it thaws a little. Plus, this pen is not really working out as far as keeping her warm enough. We're just going to have to do a little bit of modifying. The snow is really settling right where her house is. There's actually snow in her house right now, so it's not staying dry. We faced it the right direction, but it still gets in there. And this is kind of what I'm talking about when you get to your property, how it just takes a few years to figure out you know, where, where your snow drifts happen, where the ice happens. Well, apparently this is where it happens. <laughs> so we have some adjustments to make. We're gonna add on to this pen, um, close in a bigger space for her, um, and then we'll finish off the run. But for now, she's been living in the barn and she just moseys around um, all day long. She sleeps in a stall. We close her up in a stall at night. and. Then She's been happy there, and Aiden will take her out for walks um, along the driveway and so she can get some fresh air and some exercise. The reason that we put her here instead of just keeping her in the barn is we, we wanted her to be in the middle of everything because pigs are very social animals, especially pot bellies, and they get lonely. So we wanted her here where the kids can just visit her all the time when they're outside playing. This is their little playground, so she's going to get a lot more attention out here than she would if she were in the barn.
This weekend, Indigo gave us a really special Christmas present. We were able to put Piper on his back for the first time. He wasn't even phased by having her on his back. Of course, Daddy was holding on to her very um, tightly, but he didn't move one bit. And he held her on there for quite a while, so that was exciting for us. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That was exciting. He's such a good boy. Getting that thick fur coat, aren't you? You getting that thick fur coat? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can tell who's in charge here. <laughs> Is that your girl, Indigo? He thinks he's the boss. You think you're the boss. <laughs> Sweet girl. Oh, you're so pretty. Hi, beautiful. Hi, are you hungry? Are you hungry? Let's go eat. Come on. So this is where Tilly sleeps. Good morning. We've got her set up in here. And on really cold nights, we go ahead and set up a heat lamp for her because it can get really chilly. We just brought in her waterer from her pen, her nipple waterer. She hasn't quite figured this out yet. I know that she knows she can get water from it but I have been reluctant to let her water pan go dry just in case. And from all the research that I've been doing, they're smart enough to figure it out if they have no other choice, kind of like the chickens. When we made their nipple waterers, they preferred the easy access over those, but once they had no other choice, they knew where to get their water, they can smell it. They have great survival instincts, so so do pigs. So I'm gonna let this one go ahead and dry up, and then when it's gone, um, I'm trusting that she's going to go ahead and use the nipple waterer, and I'll just keep a close eye on her. But I know she knows water comes out of there, so it's just a matter of her having no other choice but to work for it, I guess. <laughs> Kinda like humans, I suppose. Mama, are you trying to tell me something? Are you a hungry girl? There's just not enough mice right now, is there? <laughs> Hi, sweet girl. She is the sweetest kitty. Here we go. Nope, just operator error. I was a little overheated anyway.
I've been meaning to do a video about alpacas for a little while now, just to kind of tell you all how this works for us, because when we first started with alpacas, it was really hard to find good information online, even YouTube channels. There is some information out there, and it's great information, but they're like two minute videos, so it's very vague. And I think the reason for that is because Alpacas are relatively a newer livestock to the United States. They've been imported from South America. Uh, it's my understanding that the borders are now closed. So what we have here is all we're ever gonna have. And that in itself is one really great reason to raise some alpacas. Now to be honest with you, when we first moved here, I had never even heard of an alpaca except for that movie, um, Evan Almighty. You did this to me. You set me up, you crazy son of a- Wow, that is disgusting. If that comes out your front, I don't even wanna know what's coming out the back. That was the first time I ever heard of an alpaca. I had no idea that they were any different from a llama. They are very similar to a llama. One very big difference between them, however, is their spitting habits. A llama will most definitely spit on a human, an alpaca very rarely will spit on a human. Now, that being said, they will spit at each other, and if you are in the crossfire, you're gonna get some of that on you. They don't seem very happy. Oh, that was gr oh. We're shearing her last. Oh my gosh. Daisy, that's just foul. So some people have asked Mark and I, why do we have alpacas? What purpose do they serve on the ranch? And to be honest, not a huge purpose other than education. They have been the easiest livestock to help us transition from city living into animal husbandry. They're just very simple, very self-sufficient. They don't require a lot of attention. They eat very little in the way of grain or any of those kind of things. So financially speaking and the workload level, they're just kind of a no-brainer for the farm. At this point, we've just fallen in love with them. They're more like a pet for us. They each have their own personality and we enjoy having them here. Now, as cute as these guys are, and as much as you're going to want to run up and hug their necks, because they're so soft, they are not gonna let you. Now, these two boys, Aslan's on the left and Shepard's on the right, they came to us as sort of a rescue. They were advertised as pick them up by this date or they go in the freezer. Well, we weren't quite ready to bring alpacas to the farm yet, but I just could not have that. So they came to live with us. And I don't know what their life was like at the farm they were at, but of course they're quite timid. Um, they've warmed up to us a little bit. We've only had them for about a year now. And they're not as skittish around us. But this guy over here, Phoenix, <laughs> the one staring longingly in the window at something, he is actually a blue ribbon winning show alpaca. He is from Wonderful Lines. He's registered. He has been well loved, well handled. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that he is with us is because his owner had a life change and had to make a drastic move to Florida and could not take him with. And she blessed us with him, which was incredible. But even he doesn't want anything to do with us. So they're just not a cuddly animal. You have to admire them from afar. But really, they're so full of personality that it is actually quite entertaining, as you can see. So we will always have some alpacas around just for the fun of it. 
As far as their care needs, alpacas should primarily be fed hay. They're a little picky as to what type of hay or what type of pasture that they will eat. They don't like overgrown pasture. They don't like the first cutting of hay, which has all of the seed heads and things like that. They don't care for that. They prefer a second or even a third cutting. So when we go out in the spring, we mow down their pasture with the tractor, and then they're much more likely to graze outside. During the spring and summer months when the grass are growing and even in the fall, we don't even have to give them hay. Like all livestock, it seems that their dietary needs are kind of a debate. So my mom always says, you have to chew the meat and spit out the bones and figure out what works for you. So for us, what works for us, because they do have a rumen and that's their digestive system, we don't give them a lot of grain. There are opinions about grain that it changes the environment in their digestive system and affects the beneficial bacteria in their gut and so it can cause them some illness. So we feed them a cup of grain each once a week and we do that to kind of supplement some of those vitamins and minerals and just as a treat. They absolutely love their grain. It is kind of hard not to give it to them daily because they look at you with those big brown doe eyes when you come out here to feed the horses and the pig and they're looking at you like, what about us? So it's hard to keep from feeding them the grain, but it's best for them. They really just need that hay and that roughage. Their biological system is designed to process that. They chew their cud like a cow. So that is primarily what they need for their diet is some good, Second or third cutting hay, we use orchard grass. We have a really great supplier for orchard grass. We get it at a reasonable price. It doesn't have to be orchard grass, but I have found that any other, hay, any other hay that we've tried to feed them, they've kind of turned their nose up. I'm sure they would eat it if they had no other choice, but they really enjoy the orchard grass. They prefer to be outside. They don't really like enclosures. Now in a cold environment like Colorado, they do need some shelter. They need to be able to get out of the snow, out of the rain, out of the wind. Um, so some sort of shelter is absolutely required for an alpaca. Some people argue that they don't need that because uh, where they come from, they don't have shelters, they're left out in pasture all day. However, in South America, it does not reach the temperatures that some places in the United States reach. So they do need um, that shelter. And these girls, they don't really leave the barn for most of the winter. They kind of have set up residence here. They'll go out in the warmest parts of the day, but most of the time they're in their pen, um, staying warm and staying dry. One thing you'll find if you get alpacas is it is difficult to find especially formulated product for them. Um, a lot of times you're directed to the goat um, section because their digestive tract works um, fairly similar to camelids. But one huge difference between the goat and the alpaca is that the alpaca does not require the amount of copper that a goat does. So that can be actually quite dangerous for an alpaca's digestive system, so you need to be careful. They do require selenium, but again, selenium can be toxic if given at um, too high of a dose. So it's something you really want to watch and possibly talk to your vet about as far as supplementing selenium. What we have done is there is a feed store that has a mineral that is um, specifically designed for the Rocky Mountain region. They've taken soil samples of our surrounding area and they've found what it has and what it's lacking and they have basically created and designed this mineral to make up for those things. So there's actually a specific formula for camelids, thankfully, um, at this feed store, but it's not going to work for every um, region. So uh, I couldn't 
I couldn't find this specific mineral at the big box stores like Big R or Tractor Supply. You really need to go find those local feed stores. They have those kind of things that you can't find anywhere else. We offer those minerals to them free choice and they don't go through that much. It takes them a while to go through. I give them a dog dish size and that will last them for several weeks before I need to fill it. So the mineral can get pricey, but because they go through it so slowly, honestly, the alpacas cost us less than our dog. This is the part about alpacas that just absolutely gets me. Unlike every other livestock that just goes to the bathroom everywhere, these animals have communal bathrooms. They will all go in the same spot and create a pile. And once they feel that pile is big enough, they'll move on and they'll create another pile. And it's so funny because they will literally stand in line and wait for each other because they cannot poop next to the pile. They must poop on the pile. The reason that I find this so interesting is because they obviously have some sort of instinct to recognize um, the dangers of the parasites spreading. A parasite, as far as I understand, will not go further than two feet from a manure pile. So if they keep their piles in one location, they're less likely to spread parasites all throughout the pasture. Now, do they know this? I don't know. Is it part of their instinct? I don't know. But to me, I think it's genius. And as the person cleaning up the pile, it's much more convenient. We've read and been told by several people that alpaca manure is like black gold. And truly, it really is, because this was our first year gardening, and honestly, nothing in our garden should have made it. Between the hailstorms and my inexperience, nothing should have come up. The one thing that I believe was our saving grace was their manure. I really believe that they are the reason that we had any harvest whatsoever. They don't have an ultra hot manure, which means they're not full of nitrogen. You're not gonna have a problem with weed seeds because they process their hay so efficiently. And so basically when these animals eat, for those of you that don't know, the food goes down into their stomachs and is processed, but it also comes back up and they chew it again. It's called chewing the cud. And then they re-digest that. So by the time they excrete, um, what's left of it, there's little to no weed seeds. So we didn't have any problems with that. The first year we got here, I used horse manure. It was very well composted and I grew a huge garden of alfalfa. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure what I did wrong there. I know it was composted, but apparently the weed seeds um, were still very active and I got nothing out of that garden. So. Um, it'll be alpaca manure for us from now on. The alpaca farmer that we get our hay from and who's been our mentor through this whole process um, at Wild Hair Alpacas, that's the name of their business. And I'm gonna put a link below for them because they offer some really incredible goods um, that they, they process the fiber and sell different things. So I'll put a link to Wild Hair Alpacas in my description in case you're interested. He was telling us last time we went to go pick up some hay that he was approached by a university that was going to um, actually pay him to come and scoop up all of his alpaca manure. They were working on a project on grounds and they decided that alpaca manure was what they wanted to use to benefit their garden. So if that doesn't tell you something, it's obviously pretty valuable stuff. I had to bring you back inside. I ran out of battery in the barn. 
So just a few more things to keep in mind with caring for alpacas is they will regularly need their toenails trimmed as well as their teeth trimmed, their front um, teeth need to be trimmed. Sometimes you'll see them protruding out of the front of their face. But they use those teeth to um, essentially cut the grass, so they need those to be the correct proportion and aligned properly to do that more efficiently. So that's something that we will um, turn to a vet and have them take care of their teeth when the time comes. Precious and Shepherd are kind of getting there, so we're looking into that and we'll give you more details um, as we learn more about that. Um, as far as our toenails go, they wear them down pretty well on our land, so we only do it once a year. Now some people do it um, much more frequently than that, but we haven't found it to be necessary. They don't curl to the side um, out here. So during shearing, when we already have them down, is when we go ahead and take care of their toenails, and that's worked for us. Um, and then also, you have to look into deworming, and deworming is a whole nother category. Anyone who owns livestock knows that that is a very controversial subject, so I won't get into that. Uh, Mark and I personally use ivermectin, and we do that once a year at shearing time as well, and we do that with an injectable. That's something you would really have to research on your own because it's quite involved. Um, but so far that's all been working well for us. If you guys have any questions about these animals or any animals you see on the farm, or if you'd like to see us make some video about anything we're doing here, just put it in the comments below. If I don't know the answer, I'll do a little research. Um, we learn something new every day, so I'm happy to learn new information. So. Um, if there's something I haven't thought about sharing, just let me know. Pop it in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas. God bless you. We'll see you on our next video. Bye.